Yeah, so um, I'll make an overview of uh, our effort to create the hardware for, for, the, for GSM. Um, hardware is here, so I will pass it uh, maybe right now. So look into it while I'm speaking to save some time. Yeah, this is actually a presentation from some uh, my member presentation from some other conference. So I apologize for a little bit I can't view you. Um, um, okay. Uh, so yeah, I will uh, tell what is uh, game theories in general, how to position it, and then uh, a, a few words about technical details and then questions and answers. Uh, so game uh, theories was designed with idea of a really low cost um, transceiver board. I mean, uh, for a really low-cost uh, GSM base station, uh, which is a kind of like mid-range, uh, so it's not like a femtocell, it's more like a picocell, so it's something in range of a uh, uh, kilometer to 10 kilometers range, and so it's not like a, a record uh, long-range uh, something which is created by Huawei, uh, which covers like 30 kilometers, so its main purpose to cover like 1 kilometer to 10 kilometers and to be power efficient like, as, as much as possible and as low cost as possible optimizing the like, whole uh, solution uh, not the only cost of the transceiver but the cost of the whole uh, solution that was the goal uh, for, the, for this hardware and uh, their other motivation was to uh, create it as an uh, open source hardware um, to uh, kind of foster uh, other people uh, in designing uh, similar systems and uh, motivate community to participate because there were a lot of talks that um, there is not enough cheap hardware for GSM so we're trying to kind of change this. Um, yeah, so it was mean uh, for very small and tiny carriers, and sometimes in developing regions, sometimes not, and uh, for rural and deserted areas. Uh, and their idea was uh, to avoid competition with big guys because, I mean, uh, at this point of time, we can't compete with like Huawei or ZTE because they, uh, by definition, have much uh, m bigger quantity, my, uh, much better implementation, like they already have like Edge, 3G and everything. Uh, so uh, the idea was to find and uh, to uh, create something uh, for users who are not satisfied with solutions for Huawei. And this is like small carriers uh, because uh, Huawei don't want to talk to small carriers because Huawei is big. That is uh, motivation for this. Uh, okay, and now a few words about um, technical details. I think that's what was most interesting for the people here. Uh, this the architecture is uh, very similar to a uh, user. Uh, so uh, how many people have not experience with users here? No one. Cool. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what we have is uh, basically uh, user M, which is a um, network version of user, uh, with uh, two daughter boards uh, integrated into a single board. Uh, we change it to uh, Spartan 3, uh, which is used on user, to Spartan 6. Um, and uh, basically, from the digital uh, uh, from, from the digital part, uh, which is a motherboard part in user, I think that's the biggest uh, change we did. Um, but from the radio part, uh, we uh, created the uh, whole new uh, motherboard, 
with uh, LMS uh, integrated transceiver because uh, uh, up to now Etos has no daughter boards with this, uh, with this transceiver. So um, this is the biggest challenge uh, for the whole integration. And we also have uh, two such transceivers while user of N has a um, single transceiver. The idea of this was to have a switch diversity. As you could see, uh, after this LMS transceivers, uh, we have uh, RF switches uh, using which uh, we could uh, receive from any of two antennas. And at the same time, uh, the TX lines are connected directly uh, to antennas. Uh, so uh, this way, uh, we could use a single channel uh, power amplifiers, which are uh, pretty cheap and uh, still benefit from, uh, from the worst to receive, uh, which is quite important if you, do have, if you want to have coverage without uh, blind spots. Uh, so that was suggested uh, by the guy who designs hardware for us. <coughs> he has a long experience with GSM, uh, and that was the solution which is the most cost efficient as a whole. Like it, that, it it's not the uh, least expensive transceiver board because it's like dual channel, you know. But when you try to build the, the complete solution, it's the best thing we can uh, we can uh, think uh, think out and it also uh, has um, a GPS included uh, to provide uh, time synchronization uh, so it uh, basically has a T6CO and a GPS and uh, GPS is uh, GPS one PPS is routed to FPGA and FPGA drives uh, DAC which pulls uh, T6CO. I think you understand why two outputs? Because it's just possible with the Sparta? And uh, okay, so uh, two outputs uh, is... To mm, okay. Uh, I th we believe uh, that uh, there are few points here. First, uh, two RFCM is much better than single RFCM. So uh, when you could have uh, 15 voice calls, uh, it's a much more common case uh, uh, than when you uh, when you have only seven calls. Because on a single RFCN, you could get, you, you could have only seven calls. On two RFCNs, you could have uh, 15 calls. And this is like much much more common case. And uh, if we cover, for example, like a village, it's uh, just more capacity. And then, with two antennas, you could have uh, diversity receive, as I said. So diversity receive is important uh, when uh, you have uh, a non-ideal uh, uh, terrain uh, to avoid blind spots because of... Uh, I forgot how to name this... Uh, fading. I mean, yeah. uh, so once we have two antennas, it's natural to transmit on both of them. So. And it's also easy to integrate because the USRP also can have two trends. Yeah. Trend. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, a user end has only single, but it's pretty easy to just duplicate the code inside of FPGA to have two transceivers. And that's why we have quite a powerful FPGA because we have two DSP chains. <coughs> Okay, so yeah, this is uh, just an overview of uh, key specifications. So it's dual TRX, as I already mentioned, with GPS local clock um, to simplify maintenance and avoid the CCOs and so on. It's uh, 3 milliwatt output power because it's an uh, output of, uh, of a um, the single cheap transceiver, but then you could amplify this to any any value, I mean, there is no issue with that, and uh, what I have been told is that 3 milliwatts is actually a standard output power 
for trans uh, for like commercial uh, GSM uh, transceiver units um, because usually they amplify outside of the transceiver unit. That's what we are going to do as well. And uh, the, the connection to a CPU unit is Ethernet because uh, we don't like USB. I mean, it's it's nice for for your PC, but it's not nice in a production environment because uh, if uh, some uh, MEI happens, USB could disconnect and it doesn't uh, uh, kind of reset connection automatically. For example, in just one case, and uh, also it has limited length. And with you with Ethernet, you could put your uh, your transceiver wherever and just connect with a long Ethernet cable, which is very nice. So. Will you also ship uh, or make power amplifiers? What? Will you also make amplifiers? Uh, don't plan to make power amplifiers because, because that's a whole different business. I mean, uh, we are not interested in that. Chinese do this pretty well. <laughs> but there are, it's, it's very easy to buy power amplifiers with GSM systems right now. Like, there are tens of Chinese companies who manufacture power amplifiers, duplexers, filters, whatever. So, anything you want from that part. But transceiver uh, is not that easy to get. So, basically, we were filling the gap. Because it's <laughs> yeah the gap filler yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah because uh, it's very easy to get a CPU board there are hundreds of them it's very easy to get um, like power amplifications and all the rev gear antennas everything it's very easy to buy anywhere but there is no transceiver which could be used for GSM specifically and which would be like easily available for both developers and for, for, for commercial uh, application. Um, so I think that's, that's it. Uh, ah, yeah, so this is uh, just a short overview of, of a single chip transceiver we use. Uh, it has integrated DAC and ADC. Uh, it has integrated uh, amplifiers like LNA, VGA, LNA on input, VGA on output. Uh, it has uh, in, uh, integrated uh, filters, if IF filters, and uh, integrated mixers. So basically, you connect this uh, to your FPGA uh, with the digital bus, and uh, you connect uh, the output of a chip almost to antenna. Like, I mean, just few, uh, few passive components and antenna. So it's very convenient. It's a single chip. It's, that's uh, was our like main motivation to use it uh, because it's much easier in manufacturing. Uh, yeah, you could see parameters here. Um, and what I would say, uh, what I um, could say that we found that it's, it should be uh, enough for uh, really like small, uh, small GSM installations, like femtocells and maybe pica cells, but uh, uh, parameters of this chip is not enough if you want to have a uh, really like big base station, like a few kilometers. And uh, so you will probably use this uh, as an intermediate frequency solution. So we will have another step of uh, of uh, a ref uh, transformation. So another mixer, another yet another filter uh, to improve uh, selectivity and few other parameters. So uh, it's quite bad because of yeah, this is a very wide band thing, which is actually created mostly for 3G and 4G. And uh, so uh, 2G is was not the goal for this chip. That's why we have some some issues with it. Um, though they promised to have uh, next version, next revision of this chip pretty soon. And hopefully, it will fix issues with GSM. Uh, yeah, and right now this chip is only available under NDA. 
it's quite stupid because um, I mean what they give you is just a data sheet and I don't understand what why do they require NDA just to send you data sheet and uh, so right now of patent laws uh, no, the interesting thing um, is not. Um, yeah, could we switch off the recording? <laughs> <laughs>